Well, good morning, everyone. It's Friday, July the 19th, and we're starting this week's video in one of our soybean PKP plots near Jeru, Manitoba. I'm here with Manitoba Crop Production Extension Specialist, Terry Buss, to discuss a couple of things that we're seeing in soybeans. And the first one is some yellowing plants even after we have had all this rain and the heat to go with it. So uh, yellow plants uh, shouldn't surprise us too much. Uh, part of it is just the time that it takes to recover. The rainfall has been, rel has been relatively recent. Uh, it's going to take time. In some cases, plants are just short of nutrients because with the lack of the rainfall, you have lack of nutrient uptake. A plant can't survive without being able to take a drink. Part of it though is also fields that are just saturated. So the plants are having trouble breathing uh, and they need some time for a little bit more dry out. There have been late herbicide applications. So in some fields we're still metabolizing herbicide and there's some stress there. We've also got some iron chlorosis because we pulled out of iron chlorosis, but we did have some of it this year. And we do need a little nitrogen deprivation in our soybeans to get nitrogen fixation going. So there will be some general yellowing before that system kicks in. And so there's a, there's a number of things going on. And a last one, which is something we should be scouting for at this time of the year, are diseases of the stem and the root. Our root rot type wilting symptoms are going to start showing up now. So it sounds like for the most part, the, uh, the favorable weather is going to take care of, of quite a bit of those problems. And we should see some greener fields. The one other thing we're noticing here is just some insect feeding and defoliation. So can you tell us a bit more about uh, which species we're looking for and what the big watchouts are moving forward? Sure. Um, I think first thing with defoliation, we have to know kind of our, our, our thresholds. Before reproduction begins, whole plant defoliation can be as high as 40%. Right now we're at the most vulnerable time, sort of R1, R2, R3. Defoliation at this time uh, shouldn't get more than about 20%, but that's whole plant. And then once we get into the later reproductive stages, the threshold moves up to more like 25 or 30 percent. In terms of the insects that are doing this, uh, green clover worm is one that we're observing in this field and it's throughout the area. Uh, green clover worm likes to feed at the top of the plant, so it can create an optical illusion where you see a lot of holes at the top. When you pull out the plant though, you realize that they're just feeding on the top leaves and the rest of them look pretty good. Uh, grasshoppers are feeding this year and we do have a fair bit of action with those up north. The big thing with defoliation is not so much the insect that's doing it. We want to identify the culprit, but the most important thing is getting a good handle on the level of defoliation so that we don't overreact. Right. The last thing after two dry seasons is uh, always rumors of soybean aphid. Is there anything that you've heard on that front so far this year? No, the whole sort of soybean aphid network has been quiet so far as far as I know. So we usually get a warning from our friends to the south that they've got them because they blow in from the states every year. We haven't heard anything. Usually this is the time of the year or even a week earlier than this where we start to detect them. The later they come in, the better for us, the less damage they're going to do. So far it's been really quiet and I personally haven't found an aphid yet. Perfect. Thanks, Terry, for your time and expertise. Next, we'll go out and take a look at where the corn growth is at. We had incredible variability this year in terms of corn seedling emergence in spring, and that's reflected in the crop staging at this point as well. Many grain corn fields will only reach the reproductive stages towards the end of July. However, we also have some outstanding examples, like this P7958 Acre Max near Grenfell, Manitoba, that's already begun pollen shed. This stand goes to show why this is still a great full season hybrid or an early corn silage variety. At this point, we can pull some years and do some preliminary yield assessments. However, they'll be more accurate again towards the end of the month or into that first week of August. And we'll keep you updated at that point as to what we're finding. Thanks again for watching this week's video. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call.